A higher protein diet is bad for your heart. It was just a matter of time before another study came out that tried to prove this to be the case. You have Tim Spector. All the evidence is that um, most people are having nearly twice as much protein in their, in their diets as they need. Saying you should eat a lower protein diet. And a bunch of biohackers and doctors also telling you to have a lower protein diet. Let's look at this article, the studies associated with this article, and let's break it all down. If this is your first time here, my name's Adam Scott Murad. I'm a registered and certified performance nutritionist and online coach. So you read this headline and you were like, ah oh, shit, those biohackers are right. You throw away your protein powder and all hopes of a built and lean physique. Not so fast. First, a quick breakdown of this article, then let's go into the studies. So a total of 23 humans were studied across two studies. In the first studies, they compared the effect of liquid meals that contained either 10% or 50% of the energy from protein, looking at mTOR activation on a monocyte, a type of immune cell made in bone marrow. The second study utilized more of a real world scenario by evaluating these outcomes in participants who consumed either a standard protein mixed meal, 15% of the calories coming from protein versus 22% of the calories coming from protein. The conclusion was that when consuming more than 22% of your calories from protein, this could increase the risk of atherosclerosis, basically hardening of the arteries. They blame the mTOR activation, which is also happening in humans, not just rodents. They specifically highlight leucine, which is higher in animal proteins. And funnily enough, this outlet actually promotes plant sources of protein. That's a video for a different day. Then they go on to quote a 2023 meta-analysis on over 500,000 people not mice. And they found in this meta-analysis no association between high protein diets and heart issues. This is where it gets more interesting. This article then goes on to still recommend a higher protein diet so long as it's coming mainly from plant sources. Now let's break down the study a bit more. They start the study by going into detail on the previous animal findings, which is fair enough because most of the research has been done in animals. Then they mention the daily RDA of protein, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. And that makes up around 11% of the calories in an average diet. So let's address this first. There are multiple studies suggesting that the RDA is not enough to maintain muscle as we age and actually calling for it to be revised. And in the context of resistance training, which is highly beneficial for your health and longevity, according to multiple studies in humans, you should be aiming for around double the RDA, so around 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight if you wanna build and maintain muscle. As mentioned, the studies looked at mTOR. They looked at the activation of mTOR and that actually only provides a snapshot of what's happening because mTOR momentarily increases like one to three hours after consuming a high protein meal. It doesn't stay elevated, it comes back down. If sharp increases in mTOR were an issue, we would see individuals that regularly resistance train with heart issues. We'd see that often because the spike in mTOR is significantly more when you resistance train, for example. But that's not the case and it's quite the opposite. Those who engage in regular resistance training actually improve all markers of health. I could easily have made a video that lasted hours on this topic, but I think you get the picture by now. And I wanna slightly shift the focus. So the liquid meal in question in one of the studies was actually Boost Plus by Nestle. It's ultra processed and contains a host of other ingredients that could actually be impacting the results. That aside, the increases in mTOR are transient, they come back down. They don't just stay raised throughout the whole time. And as we can see in other research as well, that when you look at like the Western diet, like the Western world, when they consume protein, it's usually like on average, like ultra processed sources 
or stuff like burgers, hot dogs, which is not just like pure protein. And they usually consume a limited amount of fruit and veg. So in light of this new research, I'm still gonna stick by my guns and say, still consume a high protein diet. It doesn't seem like this study changes anything. And maybe there might be future research that does, but at the moment a high protein diet is safe and effective and as part of a balanced, healthy way of living. And I'll continue to recommend 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day of protein because that seems to be safe and effective. So if you've got any questions, comment below. Deeper questions, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. Have the best day ever and we'll talk soon.